so important, man. It's so important that you don't go alone. You might lose your way. It's so important that you don't go alone. You need other people to sharpen that iron. You need a significant partner in your life. And so that's important. And it's also biblically based. I mean, if you look in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, the Bible says, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the time more, as you see the day drawing near. How many of you know the day is drawing near? How many of you know that pretty soon you're going to see your Savior on a white horse? How many of you know that? How many of you know that his head is going to be crowned the diadem? His eyes are going to be as fire. His cloak dripped in blood. And on the side of his side and on his robe is printed the King of Kings and the Lord of the Lord. I'm telling you, Jesus is on the way. You better get ready. You better get yourself ready. Get your household ready. Get your life ready. Get ready to meet King Jesus. And in the process, walk with another man so that you walk in the glory, sharpening each other. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. Now, social life can be superficial. How many of you have enjoyed the video clips over the last 12 hours or so? Watching the video clips. Look at how we've been socialized. Haven't they been great, by the way? But I believe that is a window into our hearts. We get together and we talk about football, or we talk about motorcycles, or we talk about the Spurs. And those are great topics. Those are great topics. But how many of us are vulnerable enough to go deep? And I think a large reason that we're not is because we've never been socialized to go deep. Women are nurtured. By nature, they've been socialized to develop relationships. We, we develop buddies and pals, but we never go deep on the issues for two reasons, I think, largely. Number one, we don't want it to bother anybody or to inconvenience anybody. But number two, and more significantly, we want to make sure that the outside of the cup looks good. I said we want to make sure that everything looks perfect, carefully manicured. Jesus had something to say about that then, and he's still speaking about that now. He said this in Matthew chapter 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You tithe mint and dill and cumin, yet you've neglected the weightier provisions of the law. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you blind eyes. You swallow... What? You swallow a camel and strain a nap. Woe to you. You want to go back to your crib and get on your knees. Who are you seeking? Who do you choose to be close to you? I want to tell you something. I look at all the stupidity of my childhood, and I realize a lot of my spankings, a lot of my whoopings, came as a result of who I chose as my friends. I might have grown grow up in San Francisco, but I had Texas parents. You don't know what I'm talking about. Didn't have any timeouts back in my day. I could time how long I was knocked out. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I had to kind of wonder. She said, boy, go to that willow tree and give me a switch. Do y'all know what I'm talking about? I see a willow tree this very day. I start peeing all over myself. I was so bad one summer we didn't have any shade in the neighborhood. I'm just going down the And a lot of that misery wasn't the devil's fault. I said, why did that misery wasn't the devil's fault? I, how much stuff do you blame the devil on that you bring on yourself? The devil gets way too much credit. Here I 
Back at the hotel. ¿Qué dice el chofer del viaje? Nada, muy bien. Muy buen viaje. Muy bendecidos. 